I'm so glad to be with you again. Thank you for the privilege of being with you wherever you are at this particular moment. I've mentioned, and uh, those of you who are with me with some regularity know, that I'm in the process this year, once again, of reading my Bible through, and I've come to a portion of the Bible that uh, doesn't naturally excite one, unless one believes that all of the Scripture is uh, ordained and uh, inspired by God, and therefore has its value in our lives. And I'm speaking right now of First Chronicles. Let me tell you what I think is an amusing thing about First Chronicles, namely, frequently people who want to be critical of the Scriptures, either from a friendly, jocular way, or from a really oppositional way, will say the Bible is so tedious because it has all these begats. And uh, they say that's what Genesis is all about, all those begats. Well, the truth of the matter is, of course, there's very little of that in Genesis. Uh, a few verses in one chapter rather early and uh, a longer portion in two other chapters, but quite a limited amount. I know when people make the accusation against Genesis that it has too many begats, too many is the son of or the father of and so forth, that they haven't gone very far into the Bible. If they really wanted to make that accusation, they'd talk about First Chronicles because chapter after chapter at the beginning of the Chronicles is the listing of names, who's the son of whom, etc. Uh, a lot of that. Uh, and after that, a listing of names for people in particular offices. That was important in the book of Chronicles because Chronicles was taking care of the people of God in a time of their transition when they would be sure of who they were and they wanted to be reminded constantly before God of the fact that they were uniquely God's people. They needed, therefore, to know their heritage, their lineage. So it's a big thing in Chronicles. But I'm reading right now in those chapters that are mainly talking about who's the son of whom and so forth. And yet, there's always something there to be found. I don't know how many times I've read these chapters through, but today as I was reading, I was struck by it. It spoke of the fact that uh, Reuben was the firstborn of Jacob, the firstborn, therefore, of what would be the tribes of Israel, the firstborn of that nation we now call the Jewish people. Now, in the system, not only of the world from which the Bible came, but of most of the world, to some degree, still today, the firstborn, especially the firstborn male, was the key person in the family. The heritage passed down to that person. They were to carry on the family name. And so Reuben was to be the one. But Reuben, as you know, if you're a student of the Bible, Reuben sinned against his father in a most egregious way. Won't go into the details, but he violated his role in relationship to his father and his family. As a result, he was deposed as the firstborn. And eventually, the sons of Joseph were moved up into firstborn status. Uh, Judah became the most important tribe by prophetic action and by the purposes of God. But Reuben lost his place. And it says it quite simply in the book of First Chronicles. Because of his sin, the descendants of Reuben lost their place as the leading tribe of Israel. The sins of the father did it. I want us to remember, not if, simply because we're a father or a mother or a grandparent, that what we do affects the next generation. All of us determine not just our lives, but what happens to the generations that follow us. We are all fathers and mothers, so to speak, of the history that will unfold after we're gone. It's spelled out specifically in the story of Reuben. His tribe lost their rank 
because of his sin. Every nation has its descendants. We have to know in our generation just now that the debts we get will be passed on to our children in government. The decisions we make for good or for ill will be passed on to our children. The officers we elect will not only govern us in a period of two years or four years or eight years, they determine then what the government will be in its style for a long time afterward, either in the unfolding of the same style of the person we elect or a reaction to. And the reaction is as serious a matter and is as much a result of an original action as the first action itself would be. So there you are. Know always that the descendants of Reuben lost their place because of the sins of the father. And know that you and I, whoever we are, we determine what's going to happen to the generations that follow us by the decisions we make. We determine how much other generations will have their heritage or will lose it. That's what's on my mind today, and I'm glad I had a chance to say it to you. God bless.